this is your first class. Uh, so, let us understand uh, what we are going to learn uh, in this particular course. Uh, welcome to the course on advanced neural science for engineers. Uh, myself Hardik J. Pandya, uh, I have my PhD from IIT Delhi and a short stint in Harvard Medical School for about a year uh, and also about three years uh, at University of Maryland College Park. Uh, this was as a postdoc. After joining ISC in 2017, right, the lab focus uh, was on healthcare and uh, advanced healthcare in particular, out of which one of the area, research area is on brain. And when we, when we understand the complexity that is involved in the brain, you will appreciate how things works, how a human works, right. It's a, if you say that heart is the most vital organ, so is the brain, right. Uh, and when we understand the science behind the brain, uh, then you understand that what are the gaps, right, that one can solve as an engineer uh, to address some of these important critical issues. Uh, for example, epilepsy, right, seizures in another term or fits in another term. Parkinson, where you see the tremors, right. Uh, brain tumor itself. Uh, there are EEG uh, based platforms for brain computer interfacing. A uh, lot of interesting stuff is going around this domain uh, because this is the frontier which is still unknown. Uh, we kind of understand almost each and every organ of humans except brain and the idea of this course is to make you understand what are the interesting problems, to make you understand how as an engineer you can solve some of the important gaps, to make you understand how the brain a part of the uh, brain works right, we will try to understand how it works and what is the science behind it, okay. Why we are assuming that as designing or developing a certain system for acquiring a neural signals and understanding the signal processing, right, studying the signals will help to issue the problem that we are studying on. So, with that let us start a um, little bit about what exactly a microfabrication can bring uh, a solution to the important problems. Now, before we go into microfabrication in detail, if you see the slide, uh, you can look at the website through this barcode and this is my lab website. Uh, here we have three laboratories and predominantly the work that uh, we, we are focusing on is on communicable as well as non-communicable diseases, all right. So, what is communicable disease and what is non-communicable disease and whether the study of the brain, right, falls in communicable or non-communicable, right, we will, will look into that. So, if you understand uh, sensor and to fabricate sensor, we will be talking on uh, dimensions which are of few millimeter, but the feature size will range from 10 to the power minus 6 to 10 to the power minus 9 and that is from micro to nano, micro to nano. So, that is a scale that we will be talking about. Now, when we talk about micro to nano, you all know that human hair is the thickness of human hair is about 50 to 80 microns, that is the thickness of human hair. So, what we are talking about is somewhere around 10 micrometers. And if you go down to nanometers, it is way smaller than even the thickness of one single human hair, right. So, we will be looking at the technologies and uh, how to fabricate those kind of devices. Now, uh, apart from the research area which is on brain, we also focus on heart, right. This, this first class I want to uh, uh, you know 
introduce several research area that we are working on in the laboratory. So, at the end of the course you will understand that learning certain techniques to fabricate a device or fabricate sensors uh, per se uh, how it will help you to also focus on other applications as well right. Uh, we are talking about uh, neural science. Uh, uh, the area which is brain, but if you understand how to fabricate the device, if you understand uh, the technologies that are involved in fabricating a device, then you can fabricate different kind of devices for other applications for other vital organs as well. And that is the role of uh, role of the sensors right in different application. So, let us understand a different area that one can uh, you know apply the knowledge on uh, to solve important problems and the first uh, uh, organ that we will be talking about is heart. Now, we all know that the human heart beats about 70 to 75 beats per minute right, but if it starts pumping faster what will happen? If it starts pumping faster it is arrhythmia. Now, if you do a physical activity if you run right then there is a a heartbeat will increase, but if you am when I am just delivering a lecture, if my heart starts pumping extremely faster or it beats faster, what you can say, I may have arrhythmia, all right, where heart starts pumping faster. But in certain cases, heart starts pumping unevenly, and of course, there is a cure for arrhythmia, and a part of arrhythmia is also called AFib. What is AFib? AFib is called atrial fibrillation. All right, where the heart starts pumping unevenly. Faster is one thing, uneven means fast, slow, fast, slow, 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 fast, fast. It is uh, the rhythm is not there, and how and why? Right. So, the, the reason behind heart's heart pumping unevenly is because of the misfiring of signals, electrical signals in the heart. If the electrical signal misfires, then heart starts pumping unevenly, and that is what we call atrial fibrillation or AFib. All right. Now, to understand which region in the heart is having this misfiring of electrical signals, for that, what we do? What we means a clinicians, right, surgeons. They will insert a tube, okay. This tube is called catheter, and the catheter will reach the heart. Then there are electrical sensors at the tip of the catheter. So, it is a tube with electrical sensor at the tip. When it reaches the heart, different regions of the heart they can have they can perform electrical mapping. They understand what kind of electrical signals at which regions are arising. If there is a uh, electrical mapping, then one can understand where exactly is the problem, where exactly is the misfiring of the signals, right. Once you understand where is the electrical mapping of the heart that is the certain region which is misfiring or the electrical activities are non-uniform, you take out this catheter, put another catheter and ablate the tissue which was misfiring. Ablation is heating, when you heat it tissue will die, tissue dies the conductivity will not be there. Right. So, ablation, how to ablate this heart tissue by using RF frequency. So, radio frequency ablation, right. Now, apply a force. So, where you have to apply a force because for applying radio frequency you have to touch the heart. If this is the region what I am showing on my palm, right, which is causing the misfiring of signals, the catheter has to touch this region and there should be certain force that is need that needs to be applied uh, so as to. Uh, perform the surgery right or the ablation. This force ranges from 0.3 to 0.4 Newtons that means around 30 to 40 grams. The force is required in that range because that is a optimum force for ablating the tissue. If the force is more what will happen? What you assume? If I apply a radio frequency signal and the force is more, the other region in the heart will start ablating. What we want? We do you want that? No. If the force is less, then 
the reoccurrence will occur means the patient will have the same episode even after the operation is done in 2 months 3 months because of the tissue regrowing right. Now, there is something called transmurality. What is transmurality? Now, when we look at like this, right, it is 2D, but heart is not 2D, right. So, if I if I heat the tissue, like if I ablate the tissue, is tissue completely burnt, right? If tissue is completely burnt, that is called transmural effect. Do we know that, right? So, there is an interesting uh, challenging area to understand whether the heart is ablated, that per the region of the heart is ablated correctly or not right what is the transmurality and now comes the actual problem that means does the existing commercial catheters which is a tube with rf right radio frequency ablation and radio frequency signals that you can apply on the tissue right this kind of catheters are available so the tip which can apply radio frequency the catheter that can reach to the heart and you can apply radio frequency and you can measure the force is available. So, the question would be if this kind of catheters are available then what is the gap is not it. So, if a surgeon is operating a patient and he or she can see the force on the screen then what is the problem. If you know the force you can ablate the tissue at point between 0.3 and 0.4 Newton and that is it. The problem is that they can see the force, but they cannot feel the force. That means, if I am applying this force right because the, the catheter they operate it outside right and the, the catheter goes inside. So, you are operating it you can see the force, but there is no haptics there is no force feeling of the force on the operator's hand. So, when you do not have the haptics that is a gap that you have identified can you add the haptics or haptic feedback to the existing commercial catheters right. If you add haptic feedback then when the surgeon is performing the surgery the surgeon will be able to feel the force feeling of the force while you are ablating a tissue will probably improve the way the surgery can be done. So, for that we have a collaborators from Jaideva hospital in Bangalore who are interested in addressing this particular issue and um, we are trying to fabricate uh, a catheter. We are successful in fabricating a force sensor uh, with a catheter tip. Uh, we have also developed a prototype of a catheter, but when I am talking about we are developing a catheter that means a catheter that can be taken to the next level right that can translate from laboratory to market. Hmm. So, that is a procedure that is a journey let us not worry about that a, a right now my, my point was that this is the gap that there is no haptics and can you have or can you integrate the haptic feedback to the existing commercial catheter. This is one of the important problem when we talk about uh, organ which is your heart. What is the another problem right. So, you see there is a LVD and RVD okay. So, right ventricular disorders uh, this is and then there is a left ventricular. So, if there is a change in the LVD that would be corresponding change in the RV region right. If there is a change then a doctor can predict that there will be some issue in near future. This is while the, per, the, the, the operation is done. So, can you develop a probe like a pen that I am holding here that you touch the tissue and can you tell there is a difference between your LV and RV and the RV is correspondingly changing with respect to LV. From that can you predict that your heart would get into deterioration in your future ok. I am just I am just talking um, in, in extremely layman terms. So, that we all understand that we are all of other either we are from science background or we are from engineering background right. So, I am trying to make myself 
as easy as possible so that we all can understand right what is the problem. So, there is a problem of understanding the change in the tissue property in the heart LV versus RV. For that we are developing a probe that is integrated with NIR and integrated with EIT. We will talk about what is NIR near infrared rays, what is EIT electrical impedance tomography and we will see that how these two different modalities can be integrated together even for delineating the tissue in brain right. So, when you understand um, how to use certain modalities for one particular disease or one particular application the similar kind of modalities can be used for other applications as well. So, we will be talking about NIR, electrical impedance tomography, ultrasound sensors, uh, uh, interdigital electrodes, uh, force sensors for understanding the viscoelasticity. Uh, so, this uh, we, we, will, we will be looking at all this kind of sensors and corresponding modalities as a part of this course uh, uh, and we will focus on brain uh, when we go into depth. Okay. The, so, now if you see the screen what we have talked about, we have talked about heart correct it is because heart ok. Now, now I just little bit deviated from the first point that is communicable and non communicable disease. So, communicable disease are disease like COVID right we have we have been through uh, this tough time in last few years right and we know that it is communicable it can be transmitted right. Uh, so, the infections can be transmitted communicable. The disease which cannot be transmitted right uh, are non communicable disease again to keep it in an extremely easy way right. So, we work both on cancers, we work on uh, certain uh, important communicable disease like bacterial infection called sepsis, neonatal sepsis or we, we talk about covid right. Uh, so, we had developed certain chips for uh, measuring the presence of the uh, virus right uh, in from saliva. So, that is a communicable disease ok uh, and actually when we say virus is not like really live virus we, we can we can take out the protein from the virus it is called S protein and N protein and those proteins we can measure quickly on the chip. So, there is a tensor technique let us not worry about it. The point is that the lab focus is on communicable and non communicable disease out of which right now what we have talked about is a heart disease which is a non communicable disease ok. Now, we talk about something different we talk about trachea. Hmm. What is trachea? So, trachea is a wind pipe hmm. we all breathe right try to breathe where, where how, how it goes in through the wind pipe right there is a food pipe wind pipe wind pipe is called trachea. Now, when infants particularly we are focusing on infants who if for certain reason are kept on ventilator ok. Then the trachea gets inflammated that means, the wind pipe gets inflammated. Now, if the wind pipe gets inflammated that means, in a, in a easier term even uh, and I am sure that everybody knows what is inflammation right. But to even make it easier you assume that you have a hollow pipe ok and hollow pipe is now filled at certain region with some kind of uh, material. So, what will happen if you flow the water through the hollow pipe and now the hollow pipe is filled with certain material at certain region the flow rate would be different will get affected same thing happens when the inflammation is there there is a narrowing of the wind pipe at a certain region right. So, that is called tracheal inflammation easy right. So, what is the difficulty? The difficulty is that when there is an inflammation then there is a difficulty of breathing and when there is a difficulty of breathing you know what happens. So, what is a gap? or what are the gaps? The current uh, technique <coughs> of course, is bronchoscopy right bronchoscopy is used to understand where is the narrowing of the windpipe requires an expert skilled surgeon pediatric surgeon. There is something called Krishner wire uh, it is looks like an allen key you put it and different size of allen key 
crude method of measuring uh, whether wind pipe is uh, inflammated or not right. So, can we develop a tube again what we call as a catheter with some flow sensors and if I place the tube in the wind pipe when you breathe in and breathe out the flow sensors the rate of the flow of the wind or the air right we breathe in breathe out. So, the rate of the flow of the air would change depending on the inflammation. So, you need to precisely place the flow sensor on the catheter. Second is if the tissue which are the in the trachea is inflammated we need to know what is the viscoelasticity of the tissue. For that we need to add the force sensor on the catheter. So, first is flow sensors, second is flow uh, force sensor on the tip of the catheter right two things. So, if I have the catheter that goes in the trachea in the wind pipe right I have to touch the wind pipe as you see there is a hollow right. So, you go in and you have to touch it touch where the area is inflammated when you touch it means you applying certain force right then you know what is the change in the stiffness because there is a force sensor force sensor can be piezo resistive force sensor can be piezo electric we will look at both the force sensors in detail do not worry about it it can be piezo resistive that means when you apply a force a change in resistance apply a force a change in electricity that means voltage piezo electric change resistance piezo resistive very simple if you apply and now you have to touch the tissue, but how can you touch the tissue catheter how can you maneuver the catheter how can you move the catheter right you can maneuver the catheter with the help of nitanol. What is nitanol? Nitanol is called smart actuators right. So, we will be looking at the uh, the way the smart actuators are indicated onto this tube how the force sensors indicated to the tube, how the flow sensors are indicated on the tube and when you in and when you insert this tube in the trachea how the flow change of the flow can help us to understand where exactly the trachea is inflammated and we can also understand the viscoelasticity and we can also maneuver the catheter we can move the catheter. So, there are two springs on two sides here yeah, right and there is a there is a reason of using SMA smart actuators. So, that we are when we heat the spring will contract right and when you when you cool it down it comes back to its original state we will look into that in detail. So, what we have seen now we have seen if you see the screen we have seen the trachea wind pipe is not it. The next problem that we are addressing on is on breast cancer. Hmm. Now, the, please do remember this is for you to understand how different uh, you know gaps can be uh, you know filled with the solutions uh, by using microfabrication technology, but our interest would be on brain finally ok. So, I am not talking on brain right now because I am to just cover the other other research areas and then I finally will go into the area of brain. So, the next topic that we will talk about is on the breast cancer. So, what is breast cancer? Now, uh, you know there are several kind of cancer right collateral cancer there is a head and neck cancer right, head and neck uh, and then there is a like for example, uh, there is a oral cancer head and neck is a oral cancer and then you have this uh, uh, brain tumor right you have breast cancer uh, and, and so on and so forth you have lung cancer right many kind of cancer. But breast cancer is the second largest cause of cancer related death in women ok. And <coughs> you will be surprised to know that the out of every two women identified or diagnosed with breast cancer in our country one dies ok our country is India of course. Because sometimes the uh, the course uh, you know uh, the students from different countries also register uh, for uh, the NPTEL course a beautiful platform that goes to many many students right it is a wonderful initiative uh, I, I just love it ok. Uh, 
because who gives you uh, 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 education for free, right? You only have to pay when you have to register for the exam. This is something that is awesome. So. Uh, I am sorry, uh, sometimes I get excited uh, because that is how uh, the research is all about, right. And, and when it is, when it is, when it reaches to so many students for not paying anything, that is how the education should be, right. So, uh, you, you had to deal with my uh, little bit of emotions here. Uh, but the point is that um, now we, we will talk about the breast cancer and when I said that the every second after two women, one woman dies uh, when it is diagnosed with breast cancer is because we are not having a good awareness program, right. We talk about engineering solutions, we talk about high end technologies, we talk about a lot of things that we can make in India, we can talk about a lot of things that we can import, right. But where is the awareness? Awareness is the fundamental thing that is very important, right? Lot of women. Now, all my uh, students, right, uh, girl students here who are registering for the program or people who are watching around, right, would if I ask a question that what is the screening technique to know the health of the breast, can you answer? It's difficult, right? Some of you can, some of you know, right? Now we are fortunate to have a little bit better, you know, uh, opportunity to study more than lot of other people. So we assume that we should know about the screening techniques as simple as MRI or mammography, right? But still we don't know. Now we assume that what will happen to our the mothers and daughters across this vast land. They have no idea what is awareness program. Now, we are trying when I say we is of course, the different government bodies are trying to aware people who go for the screening technique, go for the mammography, go for the MRI, right. Um, uh, but, but the difficulty there also is how to address such a large population and get into the tertiary clinics, right? Or even to go through the mammography programs, right? So, there are screening camps. If you have seen screening camps, right? So, how it is generally identified? First, we understand how it is identified, then we when we see what are the gaps, and then we see how the engineers can help or aid by developing a technology that can be used by a uh, clinician. So, aid to a surgeon, aid to a doctor, uh, uh, how we can develop a technology. But first is uh, there should be a self examination, right. So, to check once in a month that there is no fluid discharge, right, there is no inflammation, right. Um, uh, and that can be easily done, right, once in a month It's called self testing, right. Uh, so, self test is a first point. Second is clinical breast examination means that a, a subject a woman right, has to go to a doctor and doctor will check the health of the breast. And from there the next step is if the region is suspicious, if the clinician feel that the certain region is suspicious, the person has to go for mammography or MRI. If Till there is an image in which there is a region which is suspicious, the person is advised to go for biopsy, a needle biopsy where you punch the needle in the in the region which is suspicious and you take out a part of the tissue and you send it to the pathology. So, for the pathologist they will slice this tissue right and will tell will give the diagnosis diagnosis that whether it is cancer or not. There are certain markers to look into, right? Go into depth. HER two plus minus estrogen, progesterone, right? Um, so there are certain markers which are present uh, when you when, when uh, for the pathologist to know whether there is cancer or not, and if cancer is there, and what is the stage of the cancer. So this is the cycle, all right? This is a cycle. Now <coughs> there is a gap here. Right, everything is well covered. Right, from self examination, the clinical breast examination, to MRI mammography, to the pathologist, and a diagnosis. 
where is the gap? The gap is the clinical breast examination. How many women if they feel there is some problem right will be able to go to doctor and let the doctor get the test done right. When you when you understand the statistics it is disheartening that lot of women would not go due to several constraints. But can we make a tool that is easier for a doctor to test just with the breath of the patient right. Clinical breast examination you do not need to ask the woman to come to the clinic, but a tool can go to the village where there is a screening camp and just ask patient to breathe out from the air from the breath can you understand can you screen breast cancer is there or not this is one thing. So, that will that will change that will that will have more number of subjects right reaching out to doctors because now you do not have certain constraints of a clinician uh, testing a patient right a subject we do not say patient until the, the um, diagnosis is done right uh, but just a person. So, anyways we do not get into all these details my point is that if we make a tool so that a person can be screened this is called screening hmm? healthy looks like suspicious from the breath it will be a interesting concept of non invasive breath analyzer non invasive we are not invading anything right. If you put a catheter it is invasive minimally invasive because you are putting here and goes here right. If you use uh, a stent right angiography put a stent so invasive minimally invasive uh, it is also and part of uh, invasive only because goes all the way to the trachea yeah? but let us say a glucometer right just punch and but that is minimally invasive hmm? non invasive is a breath right. So, can we have a breath analyzer what we call as a electronic nose that can be used to screen the patients who are likely or who are at a initial stage of the breast cancer. Now, what I said initially is that out of every two one dies because when they come to the clinics when the diagnosis is done already they are at stage 4 or stage 3 right why because screening is not done at the right time why because they are not aware right. So, awareness is the basic then comes the technology. Now, you understand this is a whole cycle in which one is that you can make a breath analyzer or an electronic nose to identify a certain VOCs, VOCs is volatile organic compounds that will be in a higher level for the patient suffering from a certain disease in this case is a breast cancer compared to the subjects normal subjects assuming that we are all normal right uh, the breath content would be different the VOC content uh, in the breath would be different. So, can you develop such tool that is one. Second is when the tissue is given to the pathologist right I said that first is self exam then clinical breast examination then MRI mammography then the region is suspicious then the breast biopsy right needle biopsy you take the tissue out and that small tissue that is sent to the pathologist can you quickly get the half of the tissue because not complete tissue is ever used ok it is already uh, uh, saved in the tissue bank is kept in the tissue bank. So, can you take this small amount of small chunk of tissue and can tell quickly whether this cancer or not how? by using a technique that we have developed called electrical thermal and mechanical ETM right. Using this three modalities electrical, mechanical and thermal can you identify whether the tissue is normal or tissue is a cancerous tissue that is another thing that now we are talking about. The next aspect would be that if there is a cancer 
after the pathology says this is histopathology guys okay histopathology that means the tissue understanding the tissue and understanding what are the markers present in the tissue is the histopathology and that is the gold standard gold standard means across the world this is this technique is accepted this technique is considered a right technique or not right technique as you know say term right but this technique is a gold standard means this is accepted across the world as a uh, technique by which one can say and one can guarantee that there is cancer or not of course this technique has a limitation for example there is something called triple negative breast cancer triple negative means all the markers that the pathologist assumes that should be there or certain markers to be there all three are absent but there is cancer what do you mean all three biomarkers are absent but still there is a cancer triple negative breast cancer can we identify that triple negative breast cancer with the tool that we have developed based on electrical thermal and mechanical modalities and can tell the can, can give the diagnosis so that uh, we save those patients who have triple negative breast cancer right. So, 12 percent of the breast cancer uh, cases are triple negative huge number hmm? ok. Now, once a pathology examination is done and and if the report comes as positive, the person has to go for the surgery right. So, when the surgeon operates, surgeon will remove the tissue and based on the preoperative MRI, the region, the, the data, the, the images, the analysis right, he or she will remove the part of that particular uh, uh, breast right. Uh, which is the suspicious part now it is not any more suspicious it is a cancerous tissue because we have gone through the gold standard and we have the images right. So, you remove it removing is called resection resection ok. When you remove it now after you remove it how you know there is no more cancer left right. So, the tissue is sent frozen section again the pathologist look into that and they get back to the doctor. What I was trying to understand and after discussing with a few of my uh, clinical collaborators, what we uh, what we understood is that if we can have a tool, a pen, a probe that can be used or that can be given to a clinician to a surgeon or onco surgeon or breast cancer surgeon and during the surgery if the surgeon can touch the tissue during the surgery and can tell whether there is cancer or not right that will be really helpful. So, we can develop this probe we can develop this pen like structure by integrating the electrical modality or mechanical modality or thermal modality or NIR or ultrasound or integrating either or multiple modalities into the single probe. And based on the study that can we do on ex vivo now oh suddenly a new term right what is ex vivo. See there are three terms that you need to understand the first term is called in vivo I N V I V O in vivo is within the body. Second is ex vivo, ex vivo is outside the body ok. That when we understand inside the body in vivo experiments inside the body for example, ablating the tissue in vivo, ex vivo is when you take out the breast biopsy tissue and understand the uh, properties of tissue ex vivo. Third term is in vitro I N V I T R O in vitro all right. So, in vitro is when you perform the experiments in the laboratory ok. You have a device you take the cells you grow the cells study those cells uh, use different drugs to understand how the cells property would change all things are in vitro ok. Three terms in vivo ex vivo in vitro right. 
So, now we are talking about a probe that will be used by a surgeon during the surgery. So, what should be the modality or what should be the technique? It is called the in vivo right inside the body in vivo. So, if you have the probe integrated with certain modalities that can be used and when you touch this area it can tell whether it is normal or it is cancerous it is normal it is tumor right. Now, there is a question that uh, what is a tumor boundary or where is a tumor boundary all right it is an extremely hot topic. Uh, while learning all these things if you are also doing your research you are doing your PhD uh, you can you can think about finding a solution uh, that can be uh, that can be implemented to understand or to identify the tumor boundary very interesting problem ok. So, not only to identify this still there is cancer or not, but also to identify tumor boundary, but let us not talk about tumor boundary right now we will talk about just cancer or not. So, can you give a doctor a pen that can be used for identifying normal or tumor or there is just it is normal now the surgery is done successfully ok. So, there is something that we are working on we have a collaborators we are uh, working on that. Uh, uh, we, now, uh, when I talk about this all these technologies right whether it is electrical or whether it is thermal whether it is mechanical whether it is ultrasound which is acoustic right uh, I will be teaching all these modalities and the corresponding sensors for these modalities. So, let us not worry about uh, how these uh, sensors are fabricated we will 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 talk in depth uh, in the either the lectures ok. So, let us come back what you see on the slide what you see is that the next part is the oral ok. So, oral is oral cancer hmm, oral cancer now oral cancer is again a extremely what you call um, deadly disease and uh, it has a huge uh, numbers particularly uh, when you look into India right or India concept or India as general then you understand that the northeast right that region has a large cases of oral cancer. Hmm. There are several regions there are several reasons of course, there are other other regions also in, in our country uh, where there is there is a huge uh, you know data which shows that people from certain region has a higher uh, you know cases are, are the cases are very high in the certain region for oral cancer. Many reasons many analysis hypothesis, uh, but some things are like tobacco is one of the culprit right how, how it is uh, given in the literature or the advertisement right. Uh, cigarettes or beetle nuts right and other things, but uh, the the problem here is that how you can identify this oral cancer quickly and the technology can reach to the last person right. Somewhere in the remote village can you take the technology and can you tell oh so person has some kind of inflammation some kind of irritation there is a patch right there is a burning in certain region below the tongue right uh, on the floor of the mouth right uh, on the in inside the cheek area. So, how right uh, which is cancer or not it is just uh, uh, some kind of other inflammation other infections right. So, right now what are the techniques the technique is you take the swab hmm? take the swab and you send the cells to the remote pathologist not a remote is what remote because you send it to the pathologist who is in the tertiary clinic tertiary clinics and then the swab the cells because you take the swab. So, the cells from the swab are taken and smear on the glass slide glass slide smearing means spreading spreading of the cells on the glass slide. And these are done after doing a staining called H and E staining, H and E. So, 
what the pathologist will look into? The pathologist will look into different kind of parameters. One is cell to cytoplasm ratio, double nucleation, right, and several other parameters. But in in our term, right, or in our understanding, we should understand that the morphology of the cells would change from onset of the disease to the progression of the disease. Okay, so if we can identify the change in the morphology using image processing and certain times the pathologist would miss if there is a small change, but the image and the AI would not miss that part. So, can you bring the artificial neural network along with the lot of images to train the system to identify if the cell is changing its morphology. And a change in morphology when the pathologist identifies if pathology can identify a pre malignant, the malignant is a cancer, pre malignant is a pre cancer, cancer is kind of easier way to identify because there is a certain parameters that would definitely change. In pre cancer it looks kind of normal, so certain times a pathologist even the expert pathologist misses it. And how I am claiming all these things because we have a collaborator from Majumdar Sobh Medical Foundation and we have clinical collaborators a pathologist on board who does all this work. And we have we also uh, submitted a paper this published you can see that. The point is that there is a gap of pathology pathologist not able to identify the pre malignant cells okay, pre malignant cells which are pre malignant in nature. So, if and then there is a histology of course, right and the, if there is a histology you can you can train the system so that uh, you can identify this pre malignant cells. So, image processing plus AI is one thing, but then how I say that you have to bring the technology to the last person right say in a village. So, can you have a system just like a microscope and can you can the ASHA worker right aggregated social health care workers right. Um, these are the most important right personnel in the healthcare system in the healthcare chain. Right. Of course, we say that the surgeons and clinicians and all the engineers and scientists and lot of social workers, but the, the most important according to my understanding of course, are the other layers, but the, the connect with the common people with the last person is done by the social workers. So, if you strengthen the if you strengthen them by giving some kind of technology that can be easily used by a semi skilled personnel right, then it will be really interesting. So, what if you can make a microscope and give the microscope or keep the microscope there in the village and you the ASHA worker can take the swab, can stain with H and E, can put the slide it is easy ok, it is not so difficult for, uh, for, for the semi skilled personnel to do this much and press a button after putting on a uh, uh, the uh, scanner press a button. The scanner will scan entire image and will identify those cells which are morphology or uh, which has changed its morphology and those images only can be sent to a remote pathologist and a remote pathologist will say that yes it looks like atypical. So, the diagnosis is not cancer ok, the cell study of cell is called cytology study of tissue is called histology. So, when you study the cells right cytology is still, still not a gold standard it is a screening technique not a gold standard histology is a gold standard, but study of cells is faster is easier right so, you just take a swab that is it right. So, if you have the technology right at the village like a microscope with the auto scanner and can get images can be sent only the one that looks like uh, atypical that means the morphology has changed to the remote pathologist for quick diagnosis that will be a nice contribution from an engineering perspective to the clinical perspective right that is what we call clinical technology development right. Now, another uh, important solution that you can bring is can you again develop a probe we are not moving away from the probe is not it. Can you develop a probe and that can be used by the semi skilled personnels 
2 personnel, I am sorry, to be used within the mouth, within the cavity, oral cavity, okay. And you just touch the probe, it will tell whether it is cancer or not. Uh, there are certain tools which are right now uh, in the market, but we can identify a, a small even a smaller change right by using a certain modality. Okay. And I am not going into detail of that because uh, uh, it is a research problem that we are addressing right, until we have some uh, interesting data uh, of which I am confident about I will not like to just keep on talking on that particular uh, re, uh, research area. Uh, but for other area that we were talking about until now, we have a lot of data to back up the claim that we are making. This one also we know that we have a solution until we just get some data right. I hope that by the end of this uh, course, I will be able to surely tell you that okay, this is the technique by which you can identify the cancer and non-cancerous region in the oral cavity. Okay. Now, last two things in the organs that we are targeting in the laboratory. The next one is ear, hmm, ear. and since ear right is associated with the brain, everything is associated with brain in a, in a way or two right directly indirectly. Um, we will be talking about the ear and the corresponding uh, gaps that we we have identified in case of the hearing screening that is called neonatal hearing screening. Okay. So, if you uh, understand uh, all the babies right have to go through a technique or a screening technique called a BERA hmm, or ABR in 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 a right term abr is auditory brain response hmm. so to understand whether a baby can hear or not there is a tool called bera uh, which uses abr to identify uh, that baby can hear or not a neonatal uh, hearing screening technique cost is around 14 lakh to 15 lakh to 20 lakh but almost none of the primary health centers has a system. That means, the babies who are born in villages, they do not go through the screening technique. If they do not go through screening technique, that means, when they are only 2, 3 years old, their parents would know whether a baby can hear or not, when they are 2, 3 years old and that will affect the cognition. Right? because hearing is important for the speech development, hearing is important for the brain development. So, the overall the cognition may get affected. Hmm. So, we are working on that and I will go into depth as a part of this course, yeah, this particular problem and the problem on the uh, uh, different application, different uh, diseases of the brain. Hmm. So, moving to, so I am not talking more on this uh, problem right now because we are going to learn about it. But moving to the other part, which is the protein societology, so we have already discussed. If you see the screen, right, I just talked about cytology with respect to the probe that we are developing for the oral cavity, right, is not it. So, uh, we will, so this oral cancer, we have talked about probe, but the same swab when you take it, it can be used with the cytology tool, which is right over here. Okay. Now, let us talk about the next um, uh, device that we we, we work on or we have in the lab, which is focused on the protein protein interactions. Okay, protein protein interactions. So, what is protein protein interaction? Now, when there is, let me give an example, when there is a oral cancer. So, oral cancer like any other cancer can be primary or secondary. right primary or secondary that means it is either metastatic or it is non metastatic it is 
नॉन मेटास्टेटिक वॉट इज प्राइमरी वॉट इज सेकेंडरी इफ द कैंसर इज इनवेजिव सी यू ऑल्सो कॉल इनवेजिव और नॉन इनवेजिव ओके वॉट इज इनवेजिव इट विल इनवेड द अदर रीजन ऑफ द अदर अदर ऑर्गन ऑफ द बॉडी इट विल इनवेड इनवेजिव नॉन इनवेजिव मीन्स इट विल स्टे एट अ सर्टन रीजन स्टे एट सर्टन प्लेस ओके सो प्राइमरी सेकेंडरी इनवेजिव नॉन इनवेजिव मेटास्टेटिक नॉन मेटास्टेटिक ओके सेम थिंग मोस्ट ऑफ थिंग्स आर काइंड ऑफ सिमिलर Uh, at least from your perspective, you understand that when there is a metastatic, means when the cancer will spread a, through the lymph node. So there are series of lymph node, lymph node, L Y M P H, right? M P H. I hope that when you learn these new terms, you also go and Google it. That what are lymph nodes, right? And you will understand what are the lymph nodes in human body. These lymph nodes are responsible for our immune system. Lymph nodes are important for the immune system. So, what happens is that when there is a oral cancer, and when the cancer is metastatic, that means metastatic or non-metastatic. Right now, if there is a oral cancer, the surgeon will take out the series of lymph nodes. Lymph nodes are present here, they are present here, right, and they are present um, next to the leg. So, you will just understand when you uh, right now lymph node you will see. I'll try to show you the when exactly lymph nodes are there in your human body. But the point is. They will take the series of lymph nodes out to check whether the cancer has spread is metastatic or not, right? Whether metastasis has happened or not. Now, what I said, lymph node is responsible for immune system. But if the lymph nodes are taken out, then the immune system will fall. So there are certain proteins that are present in a lymph node that will be on higher concentration when the cancer when oral cancer in, in general we are talking about oral cancer right now is metastatic that means it spreads to the different region of the body all right so during the intraoperative surgery within the operation theater can you identify those protein in the lymph node if present then and then only you take out the series of lymph node. If they are not present that means cancer is not metastasis and metastasis has not happened cancer is not spreading to other part of the body do not take it out because it will hamper the immune system. Okay. Now, limited understanding about this is again from the clinical collaborators. Okay. So, what we can do as an engineer? We can develop a sensor based on the electrical impedance or based on electrochemical impedance, electrical impedance or electrochemical impedance. So, I will be showing you some of the chips that we have developed in the lab and please mind it uh, we are going to understand the some of this equipment that are used for fabrication in our experimental laboratory. You will be given a video of how the system looks like, how the techniques are there, how to uh, gown uh, uh, yourself before you go to the fab lab and how to make the device out of it. Okay. So, it is not just a theory, it is a part of the TA classes where some of the important problems will be discussed, uh, there are experimental laboratories and then there is also a lot of theory classes. So, the point that I am making is that there is a chip that I will be showing it to you which has the electrical sensor and electrochemical sensors. Okay. So, we will be talking about that. The other idea of using the similar protein protein interaction, the protein protein is antibody antigen reaction. Okay. Now, you understand antibody like why, okay. like I how I will explain, and then you see, see me how I understand uh, the antibody antigen reactions. Uh, if you see the screen, 
I will just show it to you how the how the antibody you can you can assume you assume like antibody is a y can you see the screen please. So, this is a y right. So, this is the F c region this is the a b region ok a b region this is antibody for me this is antibody not for me <laughs> generally how it is like of course, uh, you go into detail it is lot of uh, interesting stuff and lot of bonds are present, but for, for us let us understand in a very easier way. Now, you understand that antibodies like this on a device ok on a device present like this ok. right and let us say antigen looks like circle ok. So, if the antigen is present or uh, the antibody will catch the antigen like this you see again there is a reason ok there is a certain bonds that are present because of which antigen will interact with the antibodies and you get capture on the antibodies. Now, now if there is a sensor below this one then you can either measure the impedance right which is either electrochemical impedance or electrical impedance you can measure either electrochemical impedance or electrical impedance if there is a sensor below it ok. So, there is an interesting concept here which we call as a surface chemistry surface chemistry ok. What exactly surface chemistry and why we are talking about that? Because the chip that I will be showing to you right depends on the surface chemistry of this particular uh, uh, surface chemistry because surface chemistry will help the F C region to attach on the goal electrodes right. So, now let us assume not assume let us see. So, assume that we, this is antibody ok assume that this and this are like close. Now, it should hold like this correct we are why this region F c region will attach to gold why because there should be certain bonds that will be present on this gold surface right. Why you are talking about gold because the chip has gold ok. Why chip has gold because there is a sensor which is made up out of gold right. So, you have to you have to perform surface chemistry so that the F c region will attach to the gold and the A b region will wait for the antigen this is a protein antibody is a protein antigen is a protein 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 interaction that is what we are talking about protein protein interaction. Now, let us understand if you 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 see cricket right lot of you uh, students right uh, who are taking this course at least know about cricket if you do not see the cricket right. And this is an example uh, because majority of the students may have seen assuming they have seen cricket. So, when you when you catch the ball generally uh, like at the, at the boundaries right Mo generally generally a like very very uh, crude example, but just assume if you catch the ball like this the efficacy of catching the ball will be higher. If you catch a ball like this or if you catch like this if you just put it down it may fall you may not get it right the ball is coming from the from the top right the easiest way is by this. Same thing goes for this antibody the antibody is not sending straight to hold the antigen if it is sending like this or if it is reverse the the antigen will not get captured ok. So, to hold the antigen to hold the protein the the antibody should be in a certain fashion it should be oriented in a certain direction. And for that we use something called surface chemistry in which there are chemicals like paxilin which are used for uh, the improving the directionality of the antibody. So, that the antigen can be captured both are proteins. So, we call it a protein protein interaction. I gave an example of oral cancer, but <coughs> we can also take another example of uh, using the uh, uh, S protein and N protein which are present in the covid. Can you capture those protein immediately onto the chip? If yes, it is a screening platform right. So, there can be many more examples of this there is another example of antibiotic susceptibility uh, where we capture the bacteria 
on to this antibodies again with the gold surface. Now, uh, you, you again think that why we are not going into advanced neuro, neural science right for engineers. This, this techniques are all based on the sensors and sensors are also used for your advanced neural science course and that is why we are talking about all the possible applications or certain applications these are not all possible. Uh, but certain applications that we are working on so that uh, I can tell you in detail ok. There is something next called antibiotic susceptibility that means that in uh, there is a bacterial infection bacterial infection called sepsis S E P S I S sepsis. Now, <coughs> generally there is bacterial infection right uh, we we are we, we give blood and then uh, the report comes in 2-3 days and then we are given a certain tropical antibiotics right initially and for the neonates right newborns waiting for 2 or 3 days is a life threatening episode right. Uh, there are certain bacteria which are already present these are called gram positive bacteria and gram negative bacteria and out of gram positive and gram negative bacteria uh, about 15 of them are there, but 8 are uh, present in most of the cases so, 4 gram positive 4 gram negative. Can you capture those bacteria onto a chip from the blood ok from blood. Now, blood has RBCs it. So, this and uh, blood may coagulate right do you generally take the blood in the anticoagulant. So, blood will not get thickened. Hmm? So, <coughs> what we can do can we study the or uh, can we understand the presence of this bacteria from the uh, serum or plasma. So, that RBC will not be there right. So, how the plasma can be taken? You take the blood, put in a centrifuge, right? Revolve for higher, uh, rotate for higher number of uh, rota rotations per minute, and the RBCs will settle down, the plasma will come up. You take the plasma, and the plasma has the bacteria, you will know probably that the what is the bacteria uh, and what is the concentration of that bacteria uh, using the chip that we have developed. We have done this testing with PBS we are under uh, we, we are now using this chip for the uh, blood sample as well ok. So, this is for the neonatal sepsis. Now, why we want to use the chip the question is uh, the question is why we need to use this chip because there is a gap that it takes about 2 days for the report to come back when there is an infection in the neonates. Can you reduce the time? to let us say 2 hours or 3 hours or 4 hours or 6 hours right. So, even one fourth of the time that it takes from the diagnosis point of view then you can save lot of lives of the babies. The next uh, uh, device that we are addressing on or we are we are developing is on the uh, intramuscular drug delivery tool. So, <coughs> Hey, you have seen um, um, uh, in movies right or you may not have seen then um, Google uh, EpiPen E P I P E N ok. So, and the, there is when there is allergy, allergy uh, can be of peanut allergy, can be of pollen allergy, can be of uh, milk right. People have uh, several kind of allergies and certain people are very sensitive to this kind of uh, materials and if the allergy episode happens it is life threatening they have to rush to the hospital they have to get treated otherwise they will die. So, to immediately counter this allergy effect right there is something called epinephrine and that is a drug that is used for that gives time for the people to at least reach the hospital. The way to deliver this drug is by a device called epipen this device you have to open it I, I will show it to you one device uh, how it can use it. You have to open it take out the device put in the muscle right which is the thigh you press it again assuming that ok let me just uh, I will demonstrate it later, but uh, you take the device and then put in the in the thigh assuming this is a thigh this is not a thigh ok and just just giving an example I will show you to an actual demo. So, when you press it then only needle, needle will come out and will deliver the drug that is present in the epipen. The cost is 
200 to 300 dollars. The difficulty is when this episode person has to open it, take it out, deliver it, right? So there are some uh, some issues with that. So we are we have developed, in fact, uh, some uh, device called Epishot, E P I S H O T, and it <coughs> has recently won a Dyson award. Uh, so what it uh, what kind of new design that we brought it? We we brought a design which will help a patient to open with single hand, single hand operated. Now you safety features are three safety features until you touch and press and then you press a button then only the drug will deliver otherwise just pressing a button the drug will not deliver. Uh, then the needle will retract once the drug is delivered. So these are some advantages. The important advantage is that it can be reused and because we have made it here the cost comes down to one fourth of the cost of the device that is in the market right. So there is a drug delivery tool we are also working on intradermal tools we are also working on micro needles with a patch that you can put the patch and the drug will be delivered or you need to understand uh, uh, the, the needle will absorb or, or will be bio absorbed uh, into the body that means once once you put the patch the needles that are in the patch these are not steel needles nope these are polymer needles and the material is such that it can be absorbed in the body without causing any toxicity okay this is called advanced research hmm. so we are working on that to deliver a drug just by using a patch patch has small needles people will not feel will not there is no pain okay because this does not touch the nerve which will uh, cause the pain. So, uh, we will uh, we, we are uh, working on that uh, research domain as well okay. So, this is all about the clinical technology development and what kind of research area that we work on. I uh, will stop here and the next uh, class we will go through the, uh, the clinical collaborators that we work on then going to the facilities that we have and then we start uh, going into details. Uh, about how different sensors can be fabricated followed by how these uh, different uh, applications uh, whether it is epilepsy or Parkinson uh, and how we can develop device that can be implanted in a rat's brain how you take the signals all these things will be discussing as a part of this course right. Uh, uh, till then you take care I will see you in the next class. Uh, you can see this lecture in, in 15 15 minutes if you want to right uh, because sometimes it becomes overwhelming to understand lot of different topics in a short span of time. Uh, I will try to keep it as crisp as possible but I also want to uh, show you that what are the uh, tremendous opportunity that lies in front of you when you understand the technologies that we are working on and when you learn it you will also see the importance of that. Uh, we will keep talking, we will keep discussing uh, there is a portal through which you can reach us right uh, uh, reach the TAs and we will try to address the queries as much as we can right. I uh, will try my best to answer most of the things uh, through TA uh, and I look forward to uh, to a interesting you know uh, exchange of ideas sometimes you may have a very cool idea it is really cool you can send me an email as well right uh, and if possible. Uh, and if I have some solution I can help you out during that time. Uh, till then you take care I will see, I will see you in the next class uh, and we will talk about the uh, other, other important research domain bye bye.